good morning everyone and welcome it's great to be with you again this morning um, if you're joining us for the first time welcome if you're part of our regular bobbing congregation then welcome um, an extra special welcome to you too um, and one of the hardest things um, while we're going through lockdown is not being able to meet together not being able to see one another face to face on a sunday morning um, but for those of you who are part of the congregation or anyone else as well um, we've just started up this past week we've restarted um, our home groups and we're doing home groups on zoom so it's not too late to join if you'd like to be part of a home group let me know and um, we've got groups meeting on sunday night tuesday night wednesday night and thursday night and we'd love for you to join us we're going to be looking um, at the book of acts um, to see what we can learn from the early church who began in lockdown um, after Jesus died and then were released out into the world um, and they turned the world upside down so it's an exciting book to be looking at and um, be good to join in with that if you'd like to. Um, in case you're wondering um, on the news this week you may have heard that we are now allowed um, to open our buildings for private prayer. Um, we had a PCC meeting on Monday night um, and the decision has been taken that at the moment we will be leaving and um, bobbing locked and it's for safety reasons because of the age of the building and um, the access it's quite difficult um, to be able to make sure we keep it um, safe and we can't clean very difficult to clean it properly and thoroughly um, not knowing who's going in or out and we would hate to put anyone's life at risk so it's for safety reasons that we've decided at the moment to keep the church um, locked but if you do need prayer for anything, just let us know um, and we'll be happy to pray for you. If there's any practical needs again, let us know. Um, that's really important. So this morning, um, I'm going to hand over in a moment to Lewis, who's going to be um, leading us um, in the sung worship. Um, and then we've got um, a Bible reading. Martin's going to do that for us. Um, and then um, I'm going to speak um, after that. So welcome to our service. Sing is my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sing is my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art.
God, you son not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away. Today's reading comes from Romans 5, verses 1 to 8. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our own sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character and character hope and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us you see at just the right time when we are still powerless Christ died for the ungodly very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die but God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners Christ died for us. We thank you, Lord, for your word. As I said earlier, one of the hardest things about lockdown is not being able to meet together for worship on a Sunday. Um, and we're never sure at Bobbing, are we, who's going to turn up um, in, in church until the very last minute. But the way things are at the moment, we have no idea who's watching these services. All we know is that up and down the country, um, Lots and lots of people are accessing services online who would never normally come through our church doors. And so some of them are hearing the good news about Jesus for the very first time as well. Um, so it's a time of difficulty, but also a time of lots of new opportunities um, and new possibilities. And we need to explore those as we go forward into the future. Um, but this morning, um, I think um, the thing that comes out of this passage is access. And I want to talk about access what the Bible passage can help us to understand um, about access. And one of the most amazing things about the Bible is the way it still speaks to us today. So this letter um, that Paul wrote to the church in Rome 
was written down nearly 2,000 years ago and yet it's still relevant for us today just as it was to the people then. It's a powerful message of hope and encouragement uh, for all of us as individuals and as churches. When we start to get to grips with what Paul's saying here, um, we'll find something solid to hang on to, even in these times of such difficulty and uncertainty. The very fact that we're able to access this service on, online this morning means we've already picked up quite a lot of technical skills that I guess a lot of us wouldn't have had um, a few years ago and things that would have been totally unimaginable to Paul's um, congregations, Paul's churches all those years ago. But the biggest challenge has probably been working out um, how to access the service for some people for the first time. As we all know, we need passwords to log on to our laptops and our iPads. Uh, we have to create passwords every time we open up a new account. Um, and we have to remember those passwords. And it's really hard, isn't it? Because um, we're supposed to have different passwords for our bank accounts, for social media, our shopping, um, our email. And as we're not supposed to write them down, it can be really hard, can't it? And then if you want to get into Zoom, um, you need to click on a link and you have to often wait for the host to let you into the meeting. And it's like there's all these barriers, aren't there, to being able to access the things we want to. And it can be really frustrating, can't it? You know, sometimes if you try to get through um, and the internet's playing up or you can't remember the password, um, it can be really stressful. Um, and then you get that message that fl flashes up on the screen, access denied. Um, and it's like being shut in a maze. You've come to the end and you just don't know which way to turn. That's the same as life, isn't it? When Paul wrote this letter to the Romans all those years ago, the world was full of people who were looking for the right password. They were looking for a password to help them to access God. Some of them were trusting in the Jewish law. They thought if they kept all the law um, that had been written down, the Ten Commandments, that would help them to have access to God. Some people were looking into philosophy, thinking that had the answers, and others were looking to just being good citizens. But people were looking for meaning and purpose. These days, not everyone would say they're talking about God, but they're still looking for meaning and purpose and fulfilment in their lives. A lot of people are really searching at the moment. And so the key they're looking for a key that will give them access to those things. And I believe that these verses from Romans have the answers. If we want access to God, if we want to find peace and joy and fulfilment in our lives, there's only one password we need to remember. That password is Jesus. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus has opened up the way to God. He's given us full access to God. He's removed the barrier that separates us from God and from one another. And he's opened up the possibility of a whole new relationship with God. It's just like um, when a judge declares someone not guilty. They're free to go. They're free to enjoy life in a new way. So Jesus, through his death, has set us free to enter into a new relationship with a God. A loving, welcoming, personal relationship. It will change everything. By dying on the cross, Jesus showed us that we didn't have to do, we don't have to do anything to earn God's love. There's no way we'll ever be good enough to deserve it anyway. It's a free gift to us if we turn to Jesus, if we just trust in what he's done for us. We can experience peace, we can experience joy, and we can find a, peace, a hope in these difficult times. Jesus holds the key. It's a password to a whole new life of hope and joy, no matter what's going on around us. I love the way the message version puts it. We throw open our doors to God and discover at the same moment that he has already thrown his door open to us. We find ourselves standing where he, we always hoped we might stand, out in the wide open spaces of God's grace and glory standing tall and shouting our praise. Paul talks about rejoicing in sufferings. 
For the reason that Jesus chose <coughs> to give up his life on the cross was to show us how much God loves each and every one of us. And so when we know that, when we really experience that for ourselves, it's reason to rejoice whatever's going on in our lives. Even when life gets tough, we can experience peace, God's presence with us. Again, in a message translation, there's more to come. We continue to shout our praise even when we're hemmed in with troubles because we know how troubles can develop passionate patience in us and how patience in turn forges the tempered steel of virtue, keeping us alert for whatever God will do next in alert expectancy such as this. We're never feeling shortchanged. Quite the contrary, we can't round up enough containers to hold everything God generously pours into our lives through his Holy Spirit. We serve a generous God who loves to welcome us into his presence when we turn to him through Jesus. Back in the first century, Christians knew only too well what it was to suffer hardship. Many were persecuted for their faith. They gave up everything for their faith. But they were able to rejoice even in the really difficult times to stay positive because they knew that God had the present and the future safely in his hands. In recent months um, and years, I've had the privilege of seeing God work in the lives of some most amazing people who've gone through some really, really tough times. You know, we've got one lady part of our congregation at the moment who's just come to the um, end of a long um, series of chemotherapy treatments um, and operation. And yet all through that, um, what she's found is an incredible sense of peace. The one greatest miracle in all of it. At the moment, it's been good news for her, but it's that incredible peace that passes understanding. And we've seen that in her, that peace that enables um, people to rejoice even in difficult times, even in times of suffering. It's something we all need, isn't it, to be able to keep positive in those times. And as Christians, we know that suffering is not meaningless. God doesn't bring hard times and trials into our lives because he wants to punish us. He uses them as opportunities, opportunities to build our character, to help us grow, to make us be more like Jesus. And it's often when life is at its toughest that we learn the most, when we have to depend on God because there's no one else to turn to. And I don't know about you, but I think I've learned far more over the years through the hard times than I ever learn in the good times. In the current time of lockdown, we're all having to learn to slow down, to be patient, to go without some of the things we all take for granted most of the time. It can be really frustrating, isn't it, can't it, that we can't access some of the places we want to go. It's been really hard having to social distance, not being able to meet up with our families and our friends. It's been hard having all these restrictions in our lives, but the one thing that is never ever restricted is our relationship with God. Our access to him is open 24 seven, all through our lives and through eternity, once we turn to Jesus. Jesus is the only password we'll ever need. So if you're watching this service today and you're still searching for meaning and purpose in life, trying to find hope in all the mess that's going on, if you want someone to hold on to when everything else is falling apart, I just suggest try turning to Jesus. You don't have to be good enough. You don't have to have it all together. All you need is to turn to Jesus. And as the Living Translation, uh, New Living Translation puts it, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though some might possibly be willing to die for a really good person. But God showed his love for us by sending Jesus to die on the cross while we were still sinners. Jesus gives us access to a life-changing, eternal relationship with the living God. He's the only password we'll ever need. And if you need help getting in touch with us, just have a, a word with us. We'd love to pray with you. With you or to help you to understand, to give you some literature. 
So let's pray. Father, I just pray um, for those who are listening to the message today who are desperately looking for a password. And I pray, Lord, that you would help me to find the truth of who you are and to find the freedom that comes from living life in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you. Um, and now I'm going to hand over to Elaine for our prayers. Lord, as we hear the birds sing, help us to be mindful of the world around us. Help us to see the beauty in it, knowing you are the creator. Lord, I pray that we would be like the birds singing in everything we do, through every season we go through. Let us remember we are not alone, but you are always there beside us to encourage us. Lord, we pray for our sisters and brothers in Christ around the world. We know for some of them, it is not like the birds who are free and able to sing your praises. Instead, they worship in secret. Lord, strengthen them and help them to know you are near them today. We pray, Lord, that they would experience the freedom that we know to worship and adore you. Lord, we also know there are many grieving at this time. And Lord, I pray that you would bring them your comfort and pray that they would experience your peace and love in their lives and that they would feel uplifted like the birds in flight. Help them know that you are the wind beneath their wings and you will never leave them, but always remain with them. Lord, we pray for those who are sick in body, mind and spirit. Surround them with your love and touch them with your healing hands. We especially pray for those in hospital. And we bring to you the doctors and nurses and the long shifts and who are working tirelessly with more pressure upon them at this time. Lord, give them your strength. We pray for their safety and protection at this time. Lord, we bring to you ourselves whatever we are going through. Help us to know you walk with us every step of the way. Guide us in the ways you want us to live Help us to become more like Jesus. To share your love in this world around us, that more might come to know you and the unfailing, unending, unchanging love you have for each one of us. Help us to know we are loved unconditionally by you today and always. Amen. And let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Elaine. Um, as we come to the end of our service this morning, thank you to all those who've taken part today. Um, and those of you who are interested, we had um, a really good fun quiz um, a couple of weeks ago, or last week, um, and we've got another quiz coming up this Saturday night, half past seven on Zoom. Um, I'll be sending um, links round to church family. I think it will be up um, on Facebook, all the um, details about that. But it was good fun last time. And if you want to join in the quiz, be very welcome to do that. And don't forget about our house groups as well.
if you'd like to join, let me know. So I'm going to finish now um, with the blessing we usually use at Bobby, um, the grace. And if you're at home, you can join in with me. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and evermore. Amen. Have a great week. Look forward to the day when one day we can meet up face to face. But in the meantime, God bless you all. Amen and goodbye.